my base of preparation is based on your videos and that i felt were really useful especially uh, adrenal and parathyroid i mean i started uh, seeing your videos from uh, nephrology section i fell in love with the subject again i mean i was seeing cases and i was enjoying my residency but uh, going through your videos uh, i mean i got a completely new perspective i have only seen around 10 videos from endocrinology i have seen the pediatric endocrine endocrino part and that is uh, really yeah. well, well done especially the growth and puberty questions diabetic trials videos i even saw on the day before my uh, aims interview the number of questions that we get uh, from a parathyroid and which we can solve only based on your videos is uh, really really huge Good evening, friends. Uh, delighted to be back again, and this time around we have another topic from another subject, which is um, probably the most sought after subject. You know that is what we all come to understand. We often talk about demand for a specialty. So if you ask ten of the, uh, so if you ask all the ten PGs studying in a college about what they really want to become, uh, most of the time the answer that you get these days is endocrine, endocrine. So endocrine has always that hype around it. Now endocrine is probably considered as the most brainy of the specialties it is the one where thought process is the key and obviously whoever has the best thought process is the best endocrinologist and that's the reason why we tend to associate endocrine with a lot of brain so generally people who are uh, very good with studies right from their school days are the ones whom we ask to again and again tell them that you have to become an endocrinologist per se there are a lot of advantages very few night calls no much uh, procedures so that's i think one of the reasons that those may be one of the reasons why the students prefer endocrine a lot these days and it is the most competitive specialty the most tough specialty to actually get in and here we have a a, a great person now <laughs> why i say that is because he has really not slogged very hard if you look through his journey he just completed his md in internal medicine from nhl medical college in ahmedabad previously he's done his mbbs from bj in ahmedabad and this is the past his exam this very year in 2021 that's june that's when he has passed out and in a span of around 4 months he has studied what is supposed to be the most vast of all the specialties you ask me the content that we have to cover to clear endo is so huge and so enormous when you think of taking endocrine as a specialty the first thing that actually comes to my mind is like whatever medicine i have studied uh, that plus i have to study gynec i have to study pediatrics so that itself actually boxes down whereas nephrology rheumatology it's just continuation of adult medicine so that is the way but he has actually managed all that in a very short period of time so delighted to actually introduce to you ravi and uh, he is our uh, topper common merit list rank 6 and aims rank 4 so really happy to have with you man and uh, let's see how you can actually share your experience with us yeah, welcome to the you. show thank you. Uh, thank you very much sir so uh, my first question is very actually speaking really aware that endocrine is the most toughest exam to crack among all the exams or you just had a feeling like cardio nephro someone exam endocrine is another subject very really aware that this is very very competitive or much more competitive than the other subjects uh, yes sir. so when i talk to my seniors uh, huh. everyone did say that uh, rheumat and endo they are the uh, toughest exams in terms of uh, the number of seats to the yeah. number of applicants ratio yeah, and exactly. uh, rheumat uh, the advantage is that uh, you can still i mean uh, harrison uh, is still a good base uh, while for endo i mean uh, everyone did say that you know you do have to cover a lot of uh, pediatric endocrinology additionally uh, but uh, uh, i mean uh, at the end of second year when i uh, when there was uh, when uh, uh, when i had to decide what uh, specialty to choose Uh, i mean i went through my uh, likings list and endocrine was on the top of that uh, that's great see so where you actually like, uh, see uh, if you are into endocrine circles you will be knowing this there are a lot of guys who are actually preparing for years together to get endocrine you can see people who are preparing for 3 years 4 years you generally can't see people preparing for years together to get cardiology neurology it's not seen but like if you see there are quite a lot of aspirants who have been actually seriously preparing writing exam after exam just missing narrowly missing narrowly missing So many yeah. times when somebody starts preparing for endocrine, their biggest feeling is like I have to compete with these repeaters, and repeaters are very solid with endocrine. Most of them have read Williams, and they know Williams better than Williams himself. Like they've read cover to cover, <laughs> and they know everything. So I have seen so many guys like that. So were you actually like kind of bothered about it, or you just felt very chill that I'd study and let me let's go on with whatever I know? Uh, yes, sir. So when I uh, when I actually started, so after. uh after my md exams were over i gave one mock of endocrinology and i saw that 
uh, I mean, what others were scoring and what I was scoring, the distance was quite vast. And uh, while giving the mock exams, you know, you see that, uh, uh, I mean, from Harrison, uh, only 50% questions are asked. 50% uh, questions are almost directly uh, Williams based okay. and uh, I, I had I had only just I mean I had just focused on preparing for medicine uh, during my uh, MD years so yeah. I mean I did see uh, that the distance was quite vast uh, so one of the first things I did was uh, I decided not to give mock uh, for around two months so yeah. for that what I decided was I was going to do uh, go, going to do one subject at the time so I would do adrenal and then adrenals uh, exam I would give, and then I would do parathyroid, and then I would give exam of both adrenal and parathyroid. So that mm -hmm. that is what I planned. Uh, so that way, I mean, uh, the biggest fear uh, with endocrinology, which uh, I had, was that uh, I mean, uh, all the diagnosis is all based on numbers. So you have to remember uh, what mm -hmm. uh, what is the serum cortisol value which is required. Mm -hmm. So I did not want to forget. Uh, while doing the other parts of endocrinology so what i used to always do was uh, i would uh, uh, every sunday i would try to uh, give exams of subject which i had not studied in that week okay uh, so that way i mean at the end of two months if uh, if i start restart you know uh, start revising uh, i don't have to start uh, right from uh, uh, square one okay so when I actually did my first set of videos for Maro, I think, have you followed Maro for your postgraduate entrance exam or was it there that time or have you studied with Maro for uh, your PG uh, Yes, sir. so it, it had, in, actually it had just come. Uh, okay. So uh, at that time, uh, Maro had just recently launched. Uh, wow. So at that time, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of the part uh, during NEET PG was free. So, you know, you okay. could initially do MCQs uh, okay. freely. And then uh, the MCQ of the day you could do freely. So I, I, uh, I mean, I used to do that. Uh, at that time, I had already started uh, my preparation from some other source. But uh, nice. uh, when I actually gave the NEET PG exam, uh, a few of my friends who had uh, uh, gone through Maro, they actually got really good ranks. Good. So I mean, uh, so I was aware, and uh, I was actually even planning on uh, going through. Uh, Maro videos once I got the time in my residency as well because every one of them did say that uh, Maro's medicine is such that you fall in uh, love with the subject and I mean uh, once uh, I saw I mean I started uh, seeing your videos from uh, nephrology section uh, the fluid and electrolyte part because yeah. uh, at the end of the second year I mean uh, you have to take a lot of decisions uh, on that in the casualty and I mean uh, I fell in love with the subject again. I mean, I was seeing cases and I was enjoying my residency, but uh, going through your videos, uh, I mean, I got a completely new perspective. And I mean, yeah, uh, although I am actually an nephrologist, the videos which actually made the classes very popular is endocrine because when we uploaded the endocrine videos for the first time, that is when we started getting like lots and lots of calls and reviews and all those things. So I myself understood that people basically because they have very little exposure with respect to endocrine in their own college. Suddenly when they understand the nuances of the subject, this actually speaking a very, very nice, lovely subject. But the only problem with it is I feel very often it's so vast. Like pituitary has nothing to do with bone, bone has nothing to do with thyroid, thyroid is separate. Then you have something else like pediatric endocrine, you have reproductive endocrine, you have diabetes on one side. So it's like huge, huge amounts to actually cover. So you know that my videos, my medicine videos, endocrine videos are per se all adult videos. They are not pediatric videos. And yeah. you know that for exam, you have to go and do a lot of pediatric stuff. So mm -hmm. very bothered about that in the beginning, you had a plan for that straight up front or you actually managed it later on? Uh, yes, sir. so starting from the adult endocrinology part. So what I, I mean, uh, what I had done during my MD days, what I was uh, I had, uh, I mean, for uh, uh, the entire medicine preparation, what I used to do was I would start uh, seeing your videos, uh, and I used to make notes based on that. Uh, from that, I used to uh, then I used to go and read Harrison, and then add whatever points I felt were useful in Harrison. And uh, then I used to uh, view guidelines and uh, I mean, whatever the latest guidelines were on the subject and then add points from that. And uh, uh, while I was pre 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 prepared, uh, starting to prepare endocrinology uh, after my MD, that is what I did. So, uh, I mean, when I made notes, I always left uh, the left page empty and I used to only write on the right side. Uh, and so uh, 
uh, that is what i did so uh, i would add whatever points i found uh, while preparing for endocrinology from williams yeah. uh, to the notes which you already had yeah, and i mean it was immense help because uh, i mean so many questions are asked from adrenals uh, yeah. and all the adrenal questions are all case based and uh, even now whenever i am attempting an mcq uh, i mean i always remember whatever flow charts which you gave so uh, say uh, for uh, aldosteronism say above 40 years below 40 years yeah. and then when we uh, do yeah. ipss and all that yeah. i mean uh i uh, uh, for adrenals questions i uh, and adrenals is a huge chunk of endocrinology right yeah, adrenals is a huge chunk of i still remember one of the conference at the international endocrine congress the first statement that they made itself was somebody who thinks he knows enough of cushing has not seen enough that is that yes, is sir. how tough each of the topics is you can actually keep studying about cushing for one month you can study yes, about cause and hypokalemia hypertension for another one month so the topics yes, are sir. so vast and they very complex that means once you mm. go inside the topic then you understand there are small small things inside again and again you have to further and further understand and i yes, think uh, adrenal being an adult topic it's always like the hot topic for the exam it's something like yes. it's, it's very very hot now my question is many of the students have this doubt so now they have this marrow neat ss platform they have these yes. assessment videos done by nalini and mayur then they have these medicine and doctor and videos also you feel like with this we can get it done or we need some reading or do we need to buy videos because many of them it's not practical many people find it impossible to read especially when they're yes. not having endocrine exposure during under in post graduate days like most of the departments most of the medicine departments are not attached to endocrine yes. in our country so you mm-hmm. feel like with this chalega or like they have to do something more Uh, yes sir so uh, i mean uh, when I had already started preparation for endocrinology uh, the endocrino videos from marrow were not uploaded yeah, uh, so uh, i mean i didn't want to switch my preparation uh, 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 while i was preparing uh, so i have only seen around 10 videos from endocrinology i have seen the pediatric endocrine endocrino part and that is uh, really yeah. well, well done especially the growth and puberty questions uh, yes. and then i have seen uh, the parathyroid mcq discussion and i have seen yeah. the diabetic trials videos so yeah uh, diabetic trials videos i even saw on the day before my uh, aims interview uh, so uh, that is really well done uh, yeah. but i mean uh, uh, my base of preparation is based on your videos and i mean uh, uh, that i felt were really useful especially uh, adrenal and parathyroid parathyroid you have done uh, in a really short way i mean the number of videos are uh, quite less uh, for calcium but uh, the number of questions that we get uh, from a parathyroid and which we can solve only based on your videos is uh, really really huge Yeah, yes sir so uh, uh, parathyroid yeah, i mean uh, even from williams i i think i have spent around 15 20 days to prepare but at the time of the examination i mean uh, what i remember are all uh, the notes which i have made based on your videos sir i have actually personally seen all of mayur's uh, endocrine videos and his uh, mcq videos and i have actually found it to be extraordinarily good because when you see from a person like me who is not an endocrinologist we have already studied a lot of endocrine but not endocrinologists per se and when you watch my youtube videos you get those fine and fill the points which means that it's not possible to ask beyond that i think is at least yes, and parathyroid and cycle discussions are just extraordinary which means you you cannot frame a question beyond that it's very difficult okay. to frame a question whether it be numbers or whether it be one liners or clinical questions you will be able to answer almost everything and i think he has lot of venom and lot of energy when he speaks and that energy will be absolutely kind of transcribed to the student who is watching so now let me actually try to ask you this question like when people set out for endocrine uh, they generally have this problem like sh- how much should i be reading williams like williams is there williams is the bible there are so many seniors whom you see reading williams uh, when you actually set out to read williams you understand that it is not great uh, it's not easy not that the book is not the book is great but it's not easy on the other hand harrison is a which arisen is written endocrine not that very great no? you know the yes. chapter on endocrine is not that great especially those prolactinoma charts and all of seen we've striked striked it off so many number of times so yes, it's not a great uh, chapter to be very frank so mm-hmm. that brings us to this question mark of like what content you actually read if you want to read means then you're putting yourself in a bit of a fix so i obviously i always tell the students like if you're preparing for endocrine apart from pediatric endocrinology which bansali sir's book is actually good apart from that the rest of it i think videos are enough you don't have to unnecessarily take the burden of having to read more rather than that as we said in those times you can actually do a few mcqs and strengthen your mcq skill and do few medicine mcqs i think that would be a better idea do you agree with me 
Uh, yes, sir. so I feel that uh, the pediatric endocrinology part is almost not covered in uh, Harrison, and the yeah. disorders of sexual development are uh, mm-hmm. are not covered yeah. well in Harrison. So yeah. that part you need to focus on getting it done from Williams. Uh, Williams actually, I, I haven't read uh, cover to cover. So yeah. I mean, uh, the other source of preparation uh, from which I started to prepare Williams and uh, uh, endocrine, and along with that, I used to uh, review all the tables from Williams. Uh, yeah. Williams has got great tables, especially for disorders of sexual development yeah. and congenital yeah. adrenal hyperplasia. So yeah. uh, I mean, uh, if you uh, if you have understood uh, the topic well, and then you just keep on revising uh, the tables from Williams, uh, that should be enough. Otherwise. Yeah. Uh, 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 going through yeah. Williams entirely, it is. Uh, it is also. I don't think it is not very high yielding as well, because uh, what you have to uh, endocrine questions are mainly case based scenarios. Uh, yes. So uh, either they are something which you uh, which you feel is useful directly clinically, yeah. or they are uh, a short vignette uh, describing a yeah. patient, and then based on that you have to diagnose. So yeah. what is important, I think, is that uh, you need to be able to. Uh, see the vignette and try and diagnose and try and treat the patient and uh, rest of uh, the rest of the stuff uh, you can cover uh, I mean I hope to cover uh, in my yeah. endocrinology super specialty. So that is the next question that I want to ask you. Many of the students when they talk about this they tell like see my postgraduate exposure with respect to endocrine has been zero. I have not had any endocrinology postings. Nobody has actually posted me anywhere in endocrine. I have yes. only textbook knowledge and most of the people see endocrinology through my videos only. So they have only yes, idea about what I am saying. With yes, that, is, is it actually a bit of a risk preparing? In contrast, like cardiology where you may be having more exposure at a postgraduate level. You definitely would have seen a cardiology department. You would have seen in a PCDs. You may have seen more number of patients. You may have a posting also in cardiology. So when you uh, compare yes, uh, going to a new science, uh, uh, what is your idea on that? Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, I mean, uh, even for us uh, in our uh, general medicine, uh, general medicine part of our residency, uh, we pretty much get diabetes and we pretty much get hypothyroid. Even hyperthyroid is pretty yeah. uh, rare case. Uh, we yeah. do get uh, a month's posting in endocrinology in that, mm. I mean, uh, we can see uh, hyperthyroidism and we can see adrenal patients. But uh, parathyroid and all the entire pediatric endocrinology. I have, uh, I mean, uh, to be very frank, I have not seen a single it's pediatric so endocrinology right. case. Uh, right. So uh, uh, for me, uh, I was actually quite interested in this part because I was seeing, I had already seen 100 patients of MI, uh, mm-hmm. parath- uh, I mean, uh, stroke patients, uh, every emergency you no, used no, to no, see no. 10 patients. Right. So, I mean, I actually quite enjoyed uh, reading about the things which I had not seen. I used to find it very fascinating, uh, especially, I mean, uh, uh, diagnosis. And uh, with endocrinology, uh, the thing is that uh, uh, everything is is based on guidelines and everything is based on flowcharts. And the thing is that uh, still uh, every year you see uh, 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 new changes are happening. So I found that quite fascinating. and also, I used to enjoy uh, seeing the biochemistry part in all my patients. Yeah. Uh, so physical examination in endo is quite a bit less, but uh, the uh, biochemical investigation part is uh, very interesting. And that I found very fascinating as well. My next question is like uh, many people know when they start with endocrine, they start with one random chapter. Suppose they start with adrenal. We are stuck with adrenal, stuck with adrenal, stuck with adrenal and don't actually get the confidence to move on to the next chapter. So yes. my question is, what is the order in which you want a student to actually, because you can start anyway. You can study yes. pituitary without studying adrenal. It's not like nephrology where you have to start with anatomy itself. There's no rule like that. So yes. which chapter do you recommend the student to start off with? And at what point to stop and go to the next chapter? Because you can never master this. So the more you try to master, the more complicated it is going to be. So what is the order that you want the students to study and how much time do you want them to actually devote for each of these chapters? Uh, yes, sir. so when I started my preparation, uh, the date that we had was, uh, I think in mid-November, everyone was expecting that need would be held. Uh, yeah. So that is what I did. Uh, so my pediatric uh, endocrinology part was something which I had not touched. And uh, the mock I gave, I mean, I saw that uh, I was getting it completely wrong. Uh, yeah. So what I did was I wanted to start from something which I already knew. Uh, okay. na- uh, so for that, I started from adrenal and thyroid. Uh, okay. And then I went over to pediatric endocrinology part because I knew that diabetes I have seen n number of cases in my residency. Yeah. So I was yeah. quite confident with diabetes yeah. and 
Uh, we had also, I mean, in our department, we had also started to use SGLT2 inhibitors. So with diabetes, I did know uh, the latest updates and all. Yeah. Uh, adrenal and thyroid, I uh, felt were very high yielding. And exactly. uh, I already knew them well. So I started off with them. Then I moved on to pediatric endocrinology. Uh, and then I finished off with uh, the rest of the topics. Like I did parathyroid. Uh, then I did uh, the basic lab endocrinology part. Uh, for AIMS exam, especially lab endocrinology is very high yielding. So I yeah. did that. And then in the end, uh, I did diabetes. Uh, now for uh, distribution of time, uh, uh, what I had uh, felt mentally was uh, that I want to spend 33% of my time on uh, pediatric endocrinology and 66% of time on the rest of the topics. Okay. So I wanted to uh, spend the maximum amount of time on uh, pediatric endocrinology. Uh, so what I had planned was 15-15 uh, days I would give to adrenal and thyroid. Then I would give one month to uh, the entire pediatric endocrinology part and the disorders of sexual development. So combined I gave okay. uh, one month to that and then uh, the rest, I mean, uh, parathyroid and parathyroid, I gave 15 days and then the rest I gave in only a few days. Diabetes, I mean, uh, I did not spend a lot of time on diabetes as, uh, I mean, we had seen enough number of uh, cases of diabetes to be confident uh, managing uh, the diabetes part. Routine question, but still I'm asking you because most of the students actually come and ask us like, uh, how many hours did you study per day? How did you make notes for yourself? What is your strategy with respect to that? Or you didn't really have a plan or how much you felt you can study, you studied or you had a definite plan that like, I can study so many hours, so much of notes I have to make. Uh, yes, sir. so I mean, uh, once you have got your uh, MD results in your hand, it is uh, quite difficult to, um, yes, sir. so to get the motivation to study uh, immediately. Uh, so I mean, uh, once we had our dates of and even uh, during our preparation, the systems, uh, the patterns of preparation switch so initially we had 60 percent super specialty 40 percent general medicine plus pediatrics uh, yeah. and then uh, for one month uh, period in between uh, uh, the it's exam was going to be, be based completely on general medicine yeah. then it again yeah. after the case it switched so i mean i was uh, finding it difficult to you know study a number of hours uh, right. but what i had uh, what i had uh, in mind was uh, my medicine part is good uh, yeah. So I was just going to focus on uh, doing endocrinology as much as I can. Uh, uh, so for medicine, how I prepared was uh, at the end of the second year, I started to do medicine and I used to uh, see your videos, make notes from them, uh, add points from Harrison and add, point from, add points from guidelines. And yeah. uh, that is what I have done. Even for my MD exam, I have only read my own notes. I have actually not... Yeah. Uh, gone through Harrison and even after uh, after my MD exams I uh, did not give much time so I have not I have not spent an entire uh, day you know just going through general medicine so what I used to do was uh, every Sunday I would give uh, a test on one topic from general medicine and uh, three or four hours before giving the exam I would just go through uh, whatever notes I had made and if there were any new guidelines uh, I would just look at uh, if there was a new treatment, uh, I mean, new treatment uh, protocol added. So that yeah. is what I just did for medicine. Uh, for endocrine, uh, again, to notes, I would add points uh, from uh, uh, the endocrinology videos I used to see. Uh, and uh, 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 in terms yeah. of number of hours, initially, I mean, it was, I was hardly doing four uh, or six hours uh, when I had just gotten my results. And then slowly, I built it up. Uh, uh, slowly, I mean, I did say eight hours and then uh, a month before my, uh, uh, a month before my uh, INISS exam, I mean, I, I went full throttle. So uh, all my waking hours, I, I would uh, study. So just, just, uh, I mean, that was only possible. How many students have actually come up and asked this, like, um, after MD, many people really do not have the luxury or liberty to just be sitting in a room and studying. So already you're so grown up, people will be asking you, like, what, man, what are you doing here? Why did you go out and work? So it's hard to convince, right? So many of the students, what happens is they start working with work, they start preparing, and they reach nowhere. Because I feel endocrine is so competitive that uh, it's not possible for somebody to work and at the same time study and get a rank unless and until you are extraordinarily brilliant. So what are your views on that? Do you recommend these people who are serious on endocrine to actually study and work or just like continuously, just like we do for our post MBBS center to sit and study? What's your recommendation? Uh, 
uh, yes sir. so i mean uh, if we uh, i mean the uh, easiest uh, way to start working after your md residency is to join sr ship uh, and with sr ship you almost spend every day you spend 4 hours working uh, the days of opd and follow up opd it would almost uh, take 8 hours out of your study uh, and uh, after Uh, after md uh, the motivation levels initial i mean just after you have gotten the results are not so high that yeah. you can afford to spend uh, so many hours working and then you know come tired after work and then study i mean that i didn't feel was uh, pretty practical so what i had decided was i would give i mean at that time uh, the november was the date so what i decided was i would uh, give what i mean whatever motivation i can muster i would uh, give just to preparation till november and if uh, november i cannot crack then i would join sr ship uh, but uh, uh, as the inss exam came near i, I understood that you know uh, yeah, thank yeah, god yeah. i did not join sr ship it, i mean it is not possible yeah. to cover medicine and then pedia and then your super specialty subject and then you know you have to also see uh, some topics from psm so Uh, i mean combining that and then uh, still the paper will have so many questions which you feel that you know you could still have studied even more uh, so i, so I mean very important lessons that uh, i think even from the interview that we had yesterday what we saw was cardiology topper nephrology topper and now endocrine topper all of you have actually just finished the exam this year none of you have actually gone on and prepared for years to be so the most important take home thing is be solid with medicine Your specialty yes, learning will take only three or four months. Okay, you can yes, fix up your specialty and actually you can do it. Don't have to yes. be bothered too much about specialty learning. Just focus on medicine so that once your medicine is set, then there is nothing to actually be worried about. You are always in the race. And second most important point, as you said, I again and again tell this to students: people who are interested in doing a specialty, please do it at the earliest. We have a feeling that now I am done with my MD. Let me take a break and then I'll try. In the meantime, I'll actually work and find time for myself. This is okay, but you will never get a specialty seat. That is a problem. So if you want to, yes, ask, that is true. People who coming year after year, you can yourself see the guys who have actually cracked this time are 2018 PG passed out in 2021. So you yes. are competing with guys who are coming year after year much much more stronger. And now the guys who are coming out are from MBBS itself. They've studied more and they're coming, so they're obviously very hard to compete with. So if you have any interest, per se, kindly do it at the earliest. If you're kind of, kind of keeping it for later on, I really don't think it will work out. Because when we scan through the toppers, every topper is either 2017 PG or 2018 PG. We have not yes. been able to find out a single person who has done PG before that. So yes, what it literally means is there is not in the number of hours, but you, being solid with your base primary subject that is medicine, and then with that trying to study in three or four months whatever you want. I think that yes. is pretty much the way to go. Yes, sir. I completely agree. And even uh, I mean, next year it is completely general medicine for meat. And even in uh, the I N I part, uh, till last year AIMS just had super specialty questions. Uh, yeah. This year they have thirty. I mean, for all specialties, almost they have thirty questions from general medicine and fifty questions from uh, the super specialty which you are applying from. Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, even the general medicine part was what I felt gave me the edge. I mean. uh the rank differentiating part was the general medicine yes. uh yes. question uh, how was yes, your interview like, how was your interview for like how was your interview like for ems uh, uh, i mean it was a really nice experience sir i i i did uh, fumble and i made a few mistakes uh, in the end yeah. uh, some questions i got from uh, the left field so i mean i was asked one question on uh, csf rhinorrhea uh, yeah. i mean how do you test it and i i could not remember uh, yeah. that and uh, so i mean few questions i got uh, few questions i got wrong but yeah i mean it was i was really worried i mean because uh, from my seniors i have heard that uh, you know uh, the aims interview uh, if you are not from a central college uh, generally you will be drilled and you will be like i had a phone warning yes. but luckily for you because of covid there was no proper interview because if you have yes, a problem, sir, yes, i agree sir they yes, will bring you to the core because it's like they really want students who have come having this endocrine background So that's yes, why sir. people used to work after their PG. It was a different ball game altogether five years back. Yes, Now with this yeah. INI exam, it's again a matter of who knows more. Previously, yes, it was sir. not like that. Practical questions, yeah. etc., you can answer only if you work. So yes, that sir. would be there. Have you been inspired by any endocrinologist? Have you actually come across any endocrinologist in person, and have you worked with him, or like have you actually got any experience like that? Have you seen some endocrinologist and felt that I want to become like him? Uh, uh, so my uh, biggest source of uh, inspiration for endocrine uh, was. uh seeing uh hiya boromams uh, mm-hmm. lectures 
uh, otherwise uh, i mean i we i have worked uh, i have worked and enjoy working in our endocrinology department but uh, yes i mean uh, no, nice. uh, no so where are you planning to join now sorry sir where are you planning to join now uh, yes sir so i have uh, i have kept two options open uh, pgi chandigarh and jipmer pondicherry uh, yeah. most likely i'll get uh, jipmer pondicherry sir uh, yeah, so nice. so we'll be coming to south india for the first time so i think yeah, this is the future endocrine department will be great fun actually for you yeah i actually contact, contacted you on facebook i mean i i wanted yeah. to know that whether i should join jipmer or you know still uh, yeah. still continue for neat or not so i it oh, was no, very no, nice no. by the end of the day you got a seat in an institute you better stop and start joining it because you get lot of openings and avenues will actually open up in front of you as we wait along with the course the sitting and studying thing is never advisable even for these undergraduates i tell them that you get some subject something will open up in that subject the more yeah. we actually sit and prepare the more negativity the more negativity into our system and the more negativity we actually dispel outside so that is something which i do not recommend at any point and you have actually got a rank which deserves you to be in an institute and i think you are a very simple clear straightforward person i think that is the secret to your success you are having no complicated mantras for success no? you have just that <laughs> whatever is available with you you have studied and that you have studied properly you have made notes it's a very conventional approach so you have not done anything like which we can actually say oh, we studied like this i don't think you have done everything what a normal person would do even 10 years before this was the approach like we yes, study sir. whatever material we have we make notes we revise our notes we write for the exam Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. So, what is and your feeling like MD exam pressure? Like going into the final exam, how was it like the last three four months? What was the past percentages like in your college? So, what kind of pressure was it for you, or was it like easy? Uh, yes, sir. So this year, I mean, uh, the COVID second wave was going on, uh, so the past percentages were quite high. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was mostly above ninety percent. So right. this year, so the past percentage was. Before uh, COVID, for your seniors, how was it? Before like? COVID, I mean, even last year it was still COVID. uh the year yeah. before that it was around 60% sir oh, only that much so that i think is one of the prime reasons so whenever we talk about this a student first of all what he says is like first we have to somehow complete this there is so much of stress we don't i just yes. want to pass passing is my only motto now so yes. i mean you just tell them that ki i mean what will be your advice to them to or like your junior saying that first is so let me pass let me pass let me pass do we actually have to associate so much of this thing to this Like we yes. are seeing everywhere that more than seventy five percent of the candidates are passing. Okay, should we be yeah. thinking only about this pass, pass, pass thing during our course and just going behind the HOD and making him happy so that you don't fail? Isn't like there is an over exaggeration on that? I would feel so. Uh, yes, sir. So I mean, I feel that uh, I mean uh, I don't uh, I don't believe in uh, you know uh, buttering anyone. So yeah. I don't think that that is useful anywhere in life. Uh, exactly. but yes i mean i do feel that uh, the pressure of getting your first degree is quite yeah. high i mean we do have our mbbs degree but uh, yeah. in the present scenario it is uh, i mean no one considers it uh, as a degree on which you will start practice so yes. of course the stress on uh, passing your md is quite high and also uh, i mean uh, for uh, our institute most of our practical uh, practical examination is almost neurology so yeah. uh the pressure on that is quite high so that is why what i had decided was i would just i am just going to be focusing on uh, uh studying well for md and then uh for the super specialty part i will uh, start thinking after i have done my i have gone through my exam so that is what i did because uh, i mean we might i mean uh, no one knows whether you will get a seat in super specialty or not so the first yeah. thing that you have to do is uh, actually be a good physician so exactly. i mean for that that is what i felt that guidelines help uh, for that a lot uh, so i mean the questions uh, in any exam you don't get much much questions from guidelines but once you read the guidelines you do get a really clear understanding of the topic and your uh, and your uh, uh, and the topic stays with you a lot longer so I, that is what i did uh, i just focus on getting my general medicine part done once i had got that done i did not focus on general medicine at all then i just focus on endocrinology and pediatrics very good so i think like if you are junior who is into first year of his md course this is coming and asking you like how to utilize these three years properly Just forget about dm everything what would you what would be your recommendation like first year of his yes, so I, uh, i mean what i would advise them is to see uh, one of the videos which you did uh, after the pattern change Uh, okay. so in that you have said that this these uh, other than the marrow videos these are the videos that you have to see from super specialty part so right. that is what i i mean 
when the pattern change that is how i prepared my schedule that yeah. i was going to be i was going to be revising my notes and i also i had gone through i had already gone through your nephro super specialty videos and i was uh, half way through cardio when again the pattern changed so <laughs> i mean uh, uh, so for next year i mean i think that that video is a really good base of preparation uh, so if you are going through uh, your final year you know you can focus on uh, just the general medicine part and once you are through with your final year preparations or even if you have time this year i mean uh, no one will be having that much of covid duty so right. they can probably uh, give uh, more time to preparation uh, yes. so uh, so i believe that you know first that first you should uh, i mean uh, you are a practicing nephrologist so you do know and you are also uh, uh, associated with academics in a long time so you do know that these are the topics which are important and these are the topics which are not covered in as much depth which will be required for super specialty so i would say that that you know uh, first get that done you if you still have time you know you can uh, you Nobody can will be have time so i think that itself will take a lot of your time so <laughs> anyway wonderful discussing with you man it was a great experience for me personally too because you kept things so simple and so uncomplicated i think the biggest message out of this uh, half an hour discussion that we have had is um what do you say it's actually uh, very easy to walk straight you no know? perpendicular distance is the shortest distance and you have actually gone through the perpendicular distance itself you have never tried to take any shortcuts and there's no point in taking any shortcuts you just keep studying what you really have to and be strong with your mother specialty that is medicine naturally results will come your way so wonderful congratulations and all the best for a fantastic future in endocrine yes sir, thank you i mean uh, it has been a privilege talking to you i mean i have been uh, seeing your videos almost for one and a half year and to yeah. be you know able to end up you know uh, talking with you is a huge privilege for me and i hope that you know uh, even even in my super specialty maybe you know if some topics uh, i feel that i have lost touch with them uh, i mean i am sure going to be seeing your videos again sir Oh, that'd be awesome! And I think you have to spread the message to Gujarat students, whether they are from Surat or Baroda or Ahmedabad. That key. Many of the time, I found that they have a feeling themselves that I have to get through the Gujarat entrance exam. National level competition, may where do I stand? Will I be able to get through? My knowledge may not be enough. That the confidence ka to thoda kam I feel personally, and they have yes, a feeling that like, I uh, it's will it be possible for me? Like the other students are much better off. Will it be possible for me? So I think as somebody from your state who has done so well on a national level exam, in a national level exam. i think you should be actually taking up this responsibility and maybe instilling more confidence to your juniors as well yes sir i mean uh, uh, in india the population is so high and i mean so so brilliant people are going through uh, i mean are uh, uh, studying medicine uh, the cream of the cream is studying medicine that yeah. you know if you start thinking about competition you are not going to reach anywhere so uh, just just going through your basics and on that i mean if you feel that you know you are going through some questions you are going through some mock tests and you are feeling that you know this is a major lacuna for me you know uh, i think that uh, if you cover that and you if you have your base very strong uh, you should uh, i mean you should be able to uh, crack almost any specialty sir wonderful man so setting examples for all the students uh, across the country so great so great talking to you and once again thank good you. bye Uh, thank you thank you very much sir again uh, a great privilege talking to you sir okay